I have breaking news, breaking news. This isn't fake news either, although it could be considered anything that anyone says could be considered fake news by somebody. Today it was announced that there's a formation of a coalition to get rid of fake news or to eliminate fake news or to censorship news. And who determines what is fake and what isn't? And, and does conjecture get, who makes the rules? Uh, Facebook and Twitter have joined a network of over 30 news and technology companies to tackle fake news. What's considered fake news? Could it be my opinion of what I see going on? Uh, could it, what, 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 what determines uh, anyway, they want to improve the quality of information on social media, the group says. The first draft coalition formed back in June of 2015 with the backing of the Alphabet Inc.'s Google said it would create a voluntary code of practice, promote news literacy among social media users, and launch a platform where members can verify questionable news stories. The platform will be launched by the end of October this year. So October 1st, the internet is handed over to the United Nations and an international body. By late October, this new platform of censorship of some sort will be introduced. Members of the group also include New York Times, Washington Post, BuzzFeed News, Agents France Press, and CNN, and of course, Facebook and Twitter already mentioned. Now, in August, Facebook increased the use of automation to select the most talked about topics of the day for its popular trending feature as a way to reduce human bias. But we're finding out that, that what they said that was trending was not actually statistically what was trending. Who determines what is trending? Who determines what is a real story? And what's fake? I'll give you an example. Hillary Clinton on, on Sunday, 9-11, got sick, left early, standing by the curb. She, her knees buckled. She stumbled. She fainted. She lost her shoe. They had to help her get into the car. The, the national press, the media, the mainstream media, who had, were following Hillary all week because she won't do a press conference, were, and when she got sick, they weren't allowed to follow her like they had been allowed to follow her because she was sick. They didn't want this message of her sick to be portrayed that she's somehow maybe weak or sickly or not, not able to maybe be the president of the United States. So they wanted to hide this from the press. So they put the press in an area, quarantined them for 90 minutes and would not let them leave, would not let them, the mainstream media, do their job. But there were three people who happened to have cell phones who captured the video of what happened at the curb. And I already had reported it because one Fox News television anchor who was there on the scene got eyewitness account of it from two police officers and he broke the story on Fox News. As soon as he did, I took I went, I went straight. And I brought forth a YouTube video, as you guys know, I've done many times. I've broken stories myself because the mainstream media has been quarantined, waiting on, let's say, the spin on how they should report it according to the White House. We've seen this for eight years and beyond. Um, but, you know, who will now determine what is real story and what's fake? Well, the m mainstream media was not going to report the actual event of Hillary fainting and, and what it took to get her in that car and all, all the above. They were going to kill the story and not report it. Just one Fox News anchor and it would have just been hearsay and they would have probably retracted that. Except three people had it on video. And once it la launched on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube, that forced the mainstream media to have to address it. It also forced the Clinton campaign to have to address it. But with this new coalition, you won't get to do that. No matter if you got breaking news, it's going to have to go through the platform.
And I don't even know who gets to be, who even qualifies. Are they, who's going to, listen to this. So I went back to see who this coalition is. And uh, I looked them up, the first draft coalition. And uh, they did form. Matter of fact, there's an article printed on June 18th, 2015. And here's what the article said. And this is their reasoning for doing it. Imagine the following situation. You're sitting at your computer or you're looking at your mobile phone when suddenly you come across a powerful first-person video on YouTube or a visual image on Twitter depicting a breaking news event. You want to share it, but it's coming from a source or a person you've never heard of before, so you find yourself wondering, is this real? If you're a journalist, Working in a newsroom today, it's likely you've found yourself in this situation many times before, if not many times a day. In those crucial moments in the aftermath of breaking news events, like the Charlie Hebdo attacks in Paris or the earthquake in Nepal, eyewitness documentation can be essential to piercing together or piecing together what happened. The revolution in user-generated news Content presents a great opportunity to expand our view of the world, but it also raises entirely new challenges for the news industry to grapple with. How and where do you find these images? How can you verify that they are authentic and genuine? Do you have the right to use them? And what ethical responsibilities should you consider before publishing? Launching today. The First Draft Coalition is a group of thought leaders and pioneers in social media journalism who are coming together to help you answer those questions through training and analysis of eyewitness media. There's going to be a transformation, fake news. On down it says they want to eliminate or try to squelch or basically try to hamper you, the viewer, from bringing forth anything that you find and getting it to, let's say, alternative news sources like myself and many others. And, and so they, there's going to be something's going to be put in. What kind of mechanism are they going to use? They're going to use technology to censor, probably. Are they going to use um, different softwares for censoring? Probably. Will you have to register or something to be qualified to even be allowed to speak? I mean, I mean, will you, does everybody have to go through this censorship process? Is this the beginning of the takeover of the freedom of speech from every individual in the world, including the United States? It's coming. I've been here talking to you for years, telling you that you're living in the last days. And what else could be censored? Fake news? That's for what they want to determine as fake news. They could have called the Hillary Clinton situation fake news because they could have stopped it from ever being, they would have never been allowed to post that video. It had to be, has to be screened by somebody, I'm telling you. And maybe preachers, maybe you that are involved in uh, bringing forth, like myself, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Will I be allowed to say the name of Jesus? Because that could be considered offensive. Or it could be considered fake news, not verified. Or it could be called hate speech because you're offending people by just simply asking them if they'd like to be saved, if they'd like to accept Jesus Christ, not through some forceful way of, uh, you know, uh, trying to radicalize people in some forceful manner, just simply offering them the opportunity to be saved. What's going to happen in the next few months to come? The world is getting ready to change in a big way. I'm going to do my best to be right here, to be with you, to bring forth the truth. I've done breaking news stories that ended up being used by the mainstream media many times. They'll take my videos even. Sometimes they use it to, yes, it is true. Sometimes they use it to poke fun at and to actually discredit we're in the last days give your life to Jesus Christ we're running out of time